Okay, hello everybody. This is Sharonda, and this is my YouTube channel as well as my podcast, Health Matters. And in this YouTube channel as well as podcast, I go over topics in regards to um, pathophysiological concerns in regards to um, systems of the body. I have a sub um, podcast, I guess you would say, which is Mental Health Matters, and that's is what I'm focusing on today. Now, um, if you have been watching me in reference to uh, my Spiritual Sense podcast, where I go over a variety of topics in regards to the paranormal, supernatural, and occult, I did mention a book by the name of I'm Eve, and I gave my account of that book. It is a good read for those who are out there. It's I'm Eve. Now, I do remember it being about a thousand pages, but when I went to do some research, it's about 500 pages now. So I don't know if it's a revised copy of that book, but I read that book back when I was roughly 14, maybe 15 years old, and it's a good read. And so um, it's, a, it's based off the movie, if you ever heard of the movie, The Three Faces of Eve, which was a movie um, in black and white that took place back in, I want to say the 50s or the 60s. And it was a case of a woman who, um, back then they referred to as multiple personality disorders. It was different facets of her and things of the sort. And so when once the spiritual eye has been opened, um, this is God giving enlightenment in, about a situation. Okay. And something to take note of. So um, I'm going to proceed. I have pulled up a website here and I'm going to read uh, what that is. So now in the mental health community, they refer to it as dissociative identity disorder. It says it's a mental disorder when patients have two or more personalities. Causes are sexual abuse or emotional trauma. Um, also, um, there are other contributing factors uh, attributed to this uh, by way of social, biological, and environmental factors during childhood years below the age of nine. Uh, Post-traumatic events persist in neglect of a child, um, again, sexual abuse and physical abuse. So, symptoms. Symptoms, um, again, of two or more personality, personalities, memory lapses, and abnormal behavior. Um, you may show uh, memory variations, depression, drug abuse, eating disorders, hallucinations, anxiety, sleep disorders, panic attacks, suicidal tendencies, and mood swings. Um, diagnosis. So the DID is a mental um, disorder and involves diagnosis by ruling out other mental illnesses as what it has indicated here. Um, so they would have to go by a standard guideline. It mentions clinicians follow standard mental health, uh, mental illnesses guidelines set by researchers. And um, so it may vary from country to country. Uh, so here are some of the facts. It mentions that it's treatable by a medical professional, diagnosed by a medical professional, doesn't require lab tests or imaging, imaging can last several years or be lifelong. It, it mentions that it's more common in females. Treatment, the primary treatment for uh, DID is long-term psychotherapy and medication. There is no specific medication to treat the condition, but the drugs that are used to treat episodes of depression, anxiety, and psychosis. And so there are drugs that are, they use, prescription drugs. So I'm going to pull up some more information um, in regards to this. We're on Wikipedia, so I'm going to read off the information. Um, so it says it is a mental disorder characterized uh, by the maintenance of at least two distinct and relatively enduring personality states. The disorder is accompanied by memory gaps, 
beyond what we that would be explained by ordinary memory losses or issues. The personality states alternatively shows in a person's behavior. However, presentations of the disorder vary. Other conditions that often occur in people with DID include post-traumatic stress disorders, personality disorders, especially borderline and avoidant, depression, substance use disorders, conversion disorders, somatic symptom disorders, eating disorders, excessive compulsive disorders, and sleep disorders. Self-harm, non-epileptic seizures, flashbacks with amnesia, amnesia I'm sorry, uh, for content of flashbacks, anxiety disorders, and suicidality, are also common. So DID is associated with overwhelming traumas or abuse during childhood. It mentions that 90% of the cases there is a history of neglect or abuse in childhood, while other cases are linked to experiences of war, medical procedures during childhood. Genetic and biological factors are also believed to play a role. So it says the diagnosis should not be made if the person's condition is better accounted for by substance use disorders, seizures, and other mental health problems. And imaginative play in children or religious practices. Treatment generally involves supportive care and psychotherapy. The condition usually persists without treatment it is believed to affect about 1.5% of the general population uh, based on a small US community sample and 3% of those admitted to the hospital with mental health issues in Europe and North America. So DID is diagnosed about six times more often in women than in men. The number of recorded cases increased significantly in the latter half of the 20th century along with the number of identities reported by those affected. DID, DID is controversial with both the field of psychiatry and legal system, and the legal system. Rarely it has been used in court to argue criminal insanity. It is unclear whether increased rates of the disorder are due to better recognition or social cultural factors, such as mass media portrayers. Um, the typical presented symptoms in different regions of the world may also vary depending on culture. So it says, for example, alter identities taking the form of possessions, spirits, deities, ghosts, or mythical figures in cultures where normative possession states are common. The possession form of the associative identity disorder is involuntary and distressing. <clears throat> and occurs in a way that violates cultural and religious norm. So um, it does go a little bit, um, again, back into uh, signs and symptoms um, of it. Uh, you may have comorbid uh, disorders in addition to this. I mentioned that as well, such as substance use disorders, eating disorders, anxiety disorders, bipolar disorder, and personality disorders. The causes, again, we did go over that. If there was some type of abuse, traumatic events that occurred, alteration in environments um, contribute to this as well. And um, so, um, you know, as we go from being a baby to an infant to a toddler, and then we proceed on to, you know, being a young child. Uh, oftentimes they take in uh, certain things. So when they are being put in environments where there is extreme stress, particularly if there are some type of disparities and things of the sort being uprooted, they may have some family maladjustments. A lot of times this can help to attribute to things such as this. And there's another book that is listed here, which is a good read. Now I did own this book as well. I got it from a library sales 
called Sybil, and there was a movie that came out in regards to this as well. Now, I did not get to read all of the book. I read part of the book of Sybil, but I do remember the movie. And um, it's another gr great read as well in regards to um, what occurred, because what it mentions here um, is that unlike Sybil, which showed um, an account of extreme child abuse, where the cases of the faces of E, it mentions that it disclosed, it's disclosed there was no history of child abuse. So can we honestly say what that is? And I give you an example, you know, in regards to that. Um, this is not the uh, podcast nor uh, the web presentation to give my own opinion. So I'm just presenting the facts, but I do have an explanation in um, my spiritual sense podcast in regards to that. So there are treatments, uh, prognosis. So we're going to get down to the prognosis. Well, it mentions that, you know, little is known about the prognosis if left untreated. Um, symptoms can resolve from time to time. Um, they may whack someone spontaneously is what it mentions. Uh, those patients who have dissociative identity disorder with post-traumatic symptoms have a better prognosis than those with comorbid disorders um, who may still have contact with their abusers. So um, with treatment, um, the symptoms and things can subside basically in a nutshell is what it's saying um, if they're being treated, okay? But um, it does go a little bit further into some accounts of this. It mentions that in history, on uh, the 19th century, double consciousness, the historical precursor to DID, was frequently described as a state of sleepwalking uh, with scholars hypothesizing that the patients were switching between a normal consciousness and a some um, ambulistic state. An intense interest in spiritualism, parapsychology, and hypnosis continued throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries running in parallel with uh, John Locke's view that there was an association of ideas requiring the coexistence of feelings with awareness of the feelings. So with hypnosis, which was the pioneer in the late 18th century uh, by Franz Mesmer uh, and a number of others, challenged Locke's associations of ideas hypnotists reported what they thought were second personalities emerging during hypnosis and wondered how two minds could coexist. So it also goes on to say that in the 19th century, there were a number of reported cases of multiple personalities, which um, estimated close to 100. Epilepsy was seen as a factor in some cases and discussion of this connection continue into the present era. So by the late 19th century, there was a general acceptance that emotionally traumatic experiences could cause long-term disorders, which might display a variety of symptoms. Uh, these conversion disorders were found to occur even um, in even the most resilient individuals, but with profound effect and someone with emotional, uh, emotional instability, who had, uh, which they mentioned Louis Vivet, who had a traumatic experience as a 17 year old when he encountered a viper. 
So it goes on to say that Vivid was the subject of countless medical papers and became the most studied case of dissociation in the 19th century. Between 1880 and 1920, various international medical conferences devoted time to sessions on dissociation. It was in this climate that Jean Martin Charcot introduced his idea of the impact of nervous nervous shocks as a cause for a variety of neurological conditions. One of Charcot's students, Pierre Janet Jeanette, took these ideas and went on to develop his own theories of dissociation. Um, so it goes further into the 20th century where it mentions that interest in dissociation and multiple personalities won for several reasons. After Charcot's death, many of his so-called hysterical patients were exposed as frauds and Jeanette, Jeanette's associated with Charcot's tarnished his theories of dissociation. So it goes on to talk about Sigmund Freud recanting his earlier emphasis on dissociation and childhood uh, trauma. So it does go into getting into the Faces of Eve in 1957 with the publication of the bestseller book, The Three Faces of Eve um, by psychiatrist Corbett Thitping and Harvey Cleckley, based on a case study of their patient, uh, Chris Cartner Sizemore and the subsequent popular movie of the same name, the American public's interest in Multiple personalities was reviewed, revived. More cases of dissociative identity disorder were diagnosed in the following years. So the cause of sudden increase of cases is indefinite, but it may be attributed to the increased awareness which revealed previously undiagnosed cases or new cases may have been induced by the influence of media on the behavior of individuals and the judgment of therapists. So it says during the 1970s, an initially small group of clinician campaign to have it consider a legitimate diagnosis. So it, do, it does go on to mention about Sybil, the book of Sybil. Um, in 1974, the highly influential book, Sybil was published and later made into a miniseries in 1976 and again into 2007, um, describing what Robert River called the third most famous of multiple personality cases. It presented a detailed discussion of the problems of treatment of Sybil Isabel Dorset, a pseudonym for Shirley Ardell Mason. Though the book and subsequent films helped popularize the, the diagnoses and trigger an epidemic of the diagnosis, later analysis of the case suggested different interpretation, ranging from Mason's problem having been caused by the therapeutic methods used by her psychiatrist, Cornelia B. Wilbur, or inadvertently inverted inadvertent hoax due in part to the lucrative publishing rights. Though this conclusion has itself been challenged, David Spiegel, a standard, a Stanford, I'm sorry, psychiatrist who fathered, father treated Shirley Ardell Mason on occasion, says that his father described Mason as a brilliant hysteric. He felt that Wilbur intended to pressure her to exaggerate on the disassociation she had already had. As media attention on DID increased, so too did the controversy surrounding the diagnosis. So it just goes on. It's pretty much one of those really can't put your finger on it. And I'm not going to go too, too much in depth um, in regards to this. Um, because it, you know, it goes even farther when they begin to do 
more research, you know, and it, it pretty much was kind of like a Pandora's box, so to speak, to, to sum all of this up in a nutshell, um, you know, it was a journal published, as it mentions here, um, about the existence of intergenerational satanic cults responsible for a hidden holocaust and satanic ritual so it was more deeper into the issue is essentially what is what that is uh, what is presenting so 21st century um it said there was a 2006 study compared scholarly research and publications on DID and dissociative amnesia to other mental health conditions such as anorexia nervosa, alcohol use disorder, and schizophrenia. From 1984 to 2003, the results were found to be unusually distributed with a very low level of publications in the 1980s, followed by a significant rise that peaked in the mid 1990s and subsequently rapidly declined in the decade following. Compared to 25 other diagnoses, the mid 90s bubble of publications regarding DID was unique. In the opinion of the authors of the review, the publication results suggest a period of fashion that won and that the two diagnoses did not command specific scientific acceptance. So it's kind of, like, it's more or less like a gray area. You know, it's, it's hard to definitively say exactly what it is, okay? But um, because this is a different podcast and I'm just presenting the information, I'm not gonna go into details, but I do give my account as to what I feel that is, if you tune in to the episodes on my Spiritual Sense uh, podcast, and I did do a uh, episode in regards to Lilith um, on there. So if you take note of that particular podcast, as well as presentation, it's given my account as to what I feel that is, okay? So I am going to conclude this episode on my speaker.com as well as YouTube presentation speaking on DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder.